Before I get into the other disclaimers, I do have a bit of a sore throat today, so if my voice sounds strained, that's why I'm really sorry. For the purpose of this video, I need to state that all claims are alleged unless proven in a court of law. Any comparisons to other cases are purely to examine dynamic types and are not intended to add additional allegations the primary subject of the video or to conflate, trivialise or minimalise the harm caused in each case. No lawsuits today, please. By now, you guys have probably heard about Anna Campbell and the allegations that have been levied towards her. The YouTuber that boasts 400,000 subscribers on her channel recently had a video made on her by three former girlfriends who accused her of many things including what I perceive to be Anna utilising common manipulation tactics to cultivate codependency and reliance in her partners. This is particularly disturbing to me as these trends can be observed in various dynamics, the results in which can range from traumatising to deadly. I won't be able to discuss everything Taylor, Jade and Natalia raised in their video, but it will be linked in the cards and in the description, as well as videos by my homies Vangelina Skov and Pastel Bell that cover the situation. What is relevant to this video in particular is that all three women discuss their struggle with addiction and how they believe Anna used this against them. Codependency and reliance are dynamics undesirables construct in order to maintain total control over another person or other people. These perpetrators feel a deep need to constantly remain dominant to fulfill their own wants and or continue to benefit from another person slash people. For example, monetary gain provided by forcing them into quote unquote adult activity. I will be using the Rochdale gang case to further illustrate how perpetrators cultivate codependency and reliance within another. The Rochdale gangs were a network of undesirables operating in the UK between the 1980s to the 2010s that targeted young girls primarily between 12 to 14. These girls often had estranged families or other issues within their home life. Three Girls is an incredible series on Netflix which is based on the case or cases of three girls who were targeted by the Rochdale gangs. It is very dark, it's straight to the point, it doesn't cut any corners with these cases. So if you would like to learn more and watch the series, just be warned there are certain things within it that could be upsetting to viewers. Here we have the first factor in a codependent dynamic, vulnerability. Those who are young or suffer with developmental disorders, suffering with other mental health issues and or addiction are particularly susceptible to being manipulated into these types of undesirable relationships. Bearing in mind the term relationship in this video is being used very loosely and does not refer to a loving, healthy, consensual relationship. With the Rochdale case, the word is being used to substitute for phrases that YouTube will penalise me for. These were children and were obviously not in relationships. In regards to Anna's survivors, the girls stated that they struggled with addiction and Jade in particular noted how she was newly 18 when she met Anna. This fits the criteria of a vulnerable person. The process of slowly building reliance once sighting a target is slow, a notion that rhymes with rooming. The Rochdale members would initially entice the girls with free takeout at their stores and free taxi rides. Then they would move on to procuring alcohol and cigarettes, then substances, and then this would all eventually lead up to money in exchange for adult activity. This method is primarily used to ease a target into a false sense of security. Certain activities such as substance usage may be romanticised to increase its appeal and therefore may be more desirable. All three of Anna's survivors state she romanticised and provided hard substances to them. This solidly places her as the source of their dependency. During the course of a rooming, the target will be emotionally manipulated. If they have healthy relationships with friends and family, the undesirable will separate them using psychological tactics, convincing them that they are the only ones that love them, understand them, care for them. 
The Rochdale girls had supposed niceties used against them. They were the ones that fed them, let them drink, smoke and party when their parents wouldn't. While I don't believe any of these tactics were explicitly mentioned by Anna's survivors, I wouldn't be surprised if Anna herself had attempted to remove support bases from these women. One time it was mentioned wherein Anna supposedly told one girl that another girl was talking badly of her. That could be a way to try and pit them against each other. Natalia mentioned how Anna used her fan base to bully her, possibly trying to turn Natalia's own fans against her, which would have been a form of a support system. The last part is reactions to attempts to end a codependent relationship. Undesirables will rapidly change pace when threatened with losing control of their target. The Rochdale girls had the previous free favours of takeout cigarettes and substances turned against them when they attempted to refuse partaking in adult activities. The network members would also threaten their lives and the lives of their loved ones, which also serves as another way of separating the girls from stable and healthy relationships. The behaviour of the undesirable goes from switching of sweet and domineering to violent. Anna's survivors report this. Natalia claims that after she broke up with Anna, Anna proceeded to destroy her property. She would threaten the girls with self-deletion if they left. For people like Anna, the loss of control is enraging and they will turn violent or supposedly self-destructive, making threats that they will harm themselves if the other person leaves. There is nothing worse for these undesirables than losing this person they've managed to manipulate. This is how the process of codependent and reliant relationships build up. They pick vulnerable people. They supply them with things that are supposed to be seen as favours or nice because they've romanticised certain things like substances to the point where they are desirable to the target. They then hold it over their heads and then if the target attempts to leave, they switch. And sometimes the complete fear that they instill within their target during this switch is enough to lure them back in again and then the process is repeated. I will link some resources down in the description if anybody who is watching this video is currently struggling with a similar situation. One of the most important things a person can do to protect themselves is to have a support base. This can be extremely hard for people who have volatile home lives or are loners, which is why they become targets in the first place. I think it's best to attempt to have a healthy social life. Therefore, you have people to fall back upon should something like this happen to you. Recognising these behaviours and red flags are key to preventing somebody from getting into this kind of situation. Before I end this video, I just want to leave you guys with this message. If you have ever been in a codependent relationship or you are in one right now, it is not your fault. It is not your fault at all for somebody deceiving you and manipulating you. It is only undesirable for preying on you during vulnerable moments. It is completely and utterly on them. It is not your fault.